All right, so the next part here is we'll go ahead and pop our wings out here. And we've got trailing edges of our wings. And the wings are identical to each other, so Nothing to worry about with uh, mating those up or anything. What you are going to want to do is just kind of clean that up just a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do one wing on camera, and then you'll um, we'll just do the other the, the other one off camera because they're identical. sure you get those lined up correctly so you don't have that embarrassing thing happen that you just saw there. Also CA hardens quickly and you just saw me get zinged by the heat of it. And this one dried too much beforehand. Okay, so what we're going to do, let's set this, and eh, we'll go ahead and move this one up as well. There's a reason that you want to go ahead and glue both of these up. And I'll explain it here in just a second. Alright. If you are watching closely, you will see that I have done something that is the procedure for how you manage to mess up your kit. Both of these wings are laying down exactly the same way. You want to do that. That way you have a left wing and a right wing, and you make sure that you don't carve, uh, that, that you carve one of each. So what we will do is we'll take this razor plane, and I'm going to start with the trailing edge. I'm going to assume a high point somewhere around here. I'm not going to follow this cord line. I'm going to kind of go out diagonally tapering towards the tip. So I'm going to taper this off um, at the trailing edge. So what I'm going to do is, um, with my razor plane, I'm just doing this. And so I'm doing a straight taper from wherever I, my imaginary high point area back. I'm going to leave the trailing edge about 1 16th of an inch thick. I don't see any need to go any thinner than that um, on this particular aircraft. We're just going to ignore this hinge line for the aileron for right now. We'll come back and after the wing is fully sanded out, then we'll deal with that. So we will come back on camera after I've got this guy shaped out. Okay, so we have now turned most of our wings to that. So I have, I set my high point about here, basically a direct bevel back. I did kind of a stand foil type arrangement on the front. We're not doing a sharp leading edge though, uh, mainly for durability's sake. So at this point I can just take sandpaper um, and for this back section, Literally, uh, what you're about to see is the amount of finished sanding that's required. Uh, if you, if you, um, mind you, if you've got a really nice razor plane, if you're familiar with using it. Uh, but the bottom line is, um, with the exception of a few gouges that you may accidentally put in there, um, this is basically. Yeah, there we go. So that's the back half of the wing, back two thirds of it really done. And then we can come around the front, we can sand it off up here, and round off the leading edge. So that's your first clue that I'm departing from my stand foil roots. Those of you that are familiar with the other aircraft that we fly, you know, most of our stuff is gliders, and there's a particular airfoil I really like. Um, 
and I'm departing from it on this because we don't need a razor blade leading edge, and since we don't have any facing on the leading edge, that's just an invitation to getting your uh, leading edge all dinged up. Um, and that kind of defeats the whole point of having a razor sharp leading edge. <clears throat> also, if you're going to be making a lot of planes like this, I highly recommend a dust mask. And then we'll repeat that on this wing. And uh, when we come back, we'll uh, put hinges on it and all that good stuff. Okay, so now we've got both wings sanded and finished out, and they all look good together here. We're going to come in, we'll go ahead and double wings here. For those of you who have the luxury of having a, um, um, a disc sander or something like that, that would be excellent for setting these uh, dihedral angles. I do not, therefore, I free it. Good. And check one last thing. <coughs> okay, now at this point we need to do our aileron hinges. So we're going to cut out our ailerons here. Set that one aside though. So, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut this aileron free. Now, if you remember on the uh, elevator, we beveled both surfaces. I don't really want to dig in there too much. Um, why am I doing it that way? Use the razor plane. So, I'm going to bevel this back fairly aggressively. Because remember, we do not have a rudder on this airplane, so we want plenty of yaw authority. And I'm going to sand off a little bit of my aileron here at the root. And that just ensures... And be very careful sanding this so that you don't break it off. that does is that just gives me plenty of nice clearance at the front. I've got fairly generous aileron travel here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off another thin strip of my um, um, it's technically covering material, but today we are calling it hinge material. And we will cut this guy to size, roughly. Leave it a little over length for the wingtip. Now we'll flip this arrangement over. So our hinge is going on the bottom. And you say, but that is going to cover up the slot for the control horn. That's okay, we will cut that loose later. Now we want these ailerons secured very strongly because the loads on them are fairly high and unlike our elevator they are not spring loaded.
Now one thing you may notice is that what I'm doing when I'm putting these hinges on is I'm starting from one end and going to the other instead of the uh, traditional method which is to start at one, uh, is to tack down on the extremities. And the reason that I'm doing that is obviously this is, you know, heat shrink or heat activated shrinkage and whatnot. And so if I let the, the film shrink as I go, that ensures that I don't put tension on this, um, my flying surface from the, uh, from the covering material, hinge material. And that prevents it from trying to warp my wing. At least in part of the world where I live, I have enough to worry about with humidity changes. Because the plastic does not deform with humidity, but the balsa does. This is one of the reasons why people pay for the high-end uh, carbon models, because they are unaffected by that. And lots of other more important reasons, but that one is still definitely a, a thing that is mentioned occasionally. And with that, my camera is secure. And then I just trim away the excess at the tip. And find out my aileron travel is not as good as I'd hoped for. So what we're going to do is we're going to more sand in a little extra. And now I've got very good aileron travel, and we're good. We're not going to put the control horns in yet, we'll put those in after we've set the dihedral. So we'll be right back, and when we come back we'll have both of these hinged. Okay, so we're going to take that uh, piece that your uh, vertical stab, fin, whatever you want to call it. No, that's me, I'm the fin, right? Take this triangle, set it aside for a second, hit this wing joint with some CA here, you want to move fairly quickly, uh, particularly I, because this is fairly light wood that I've got here. Um, and when you've got light wood, the CA soaks into it, spreads out. Uh, fairly quickly and hardens, except it's not doing that right now. It's making me a liar. There we go. Now it's starting to harden. And we'll go ahead and hit that with accelerator on there. If I can find something to dip in the accelerator, there we go. Now, so they tell you that wax paper will not stick to CA. You have just seen proof that is not the case. Now, we will go ahead and we will slot these guys for our aileron push rods. Push rods, you're right. 
These are called control horns, just for those of you who are keeping tabs. Control horns, not push rods. And these have little notches on each end um, that allow you to set how far to push them in. Now at this point, you have your two control horns on the bottom, um, and so the wing would then mount in like so. Now you'll notice there's some gap along either side, there are some ways to fill that in. However, we're not ready to, to fasten the wing in place, because the next step is we need to put our electronics in here. Um, so we will get to those uh, those next. Okay, we've uh, things have changed a little since what you last saw. We're painted up and all pretty light. Uh, I went ahead and mounted the motor on the firewall up here. Uh, a few notes that you'll want to take into account: um, the the little hole that the the back of the um, motor, the C clip on the motor shaft. Um, it didn't clear that real well, so I had to take a knife in there and hollow that out. Uh, this motor is a little different from the specs that I found online for it. Uh, so, so take that into account with any motor that you, you have. You're going to have to deal with that. Do a little bit of hollowing out and get the screws to go in correctly. Um, I was going to try to mount this firewall in with, uh, as far as the crossbar with um, servo screws. Mine were a little too short. So I actually put have a screw that goes all the way through right now, and it, it comes out the other side, and that holds this in place uh, very firmly. Um, as far as for hooking it up, we'll be able to go in here, and we'll be able to configure everything. We're going to wait on that um, until the, the very end here. So what we want to do is we want to get some servos together. I've got uh, three servos all set up. I've got dual aileron set up on this. I've not done anything with flaperons or anything, but I've got these all going the right direction. So what we're going to do is we're going to glue these servos together. Hopefully we'll be able to fit them all in here like this. Probably not, actually. All right, so let me power this guy down. I'm going to leave everything hooked up together for now. I think we'll be able to get away with that. But what we want to do is we want to get these two servos in. Go in there. There we go. Oh, no. What I have done is I already, since I already have the control horns on here. Um, installing these with there must be a burr on that servo. Oh, let's see. There we go. Well, that's still not it. I've got one that goes in fine and one that doesn't. All right. So what my problem is is that my control horns are not clearing here. Uh, so what I'm going to do. Hopefully by the time you get a hold of this kit, uh, this problem will not exist. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to carve away at these portholes a little bit. I will say these are the Turnigy servos, which um, are a little bit taller than what I recommend anyway. Um, so take that into account as well. And I want to make 
sure we have clearance along the full length of travel of the servo arms. And that should do it for us. Now, let's see. I need to power this guy back up, actually. So I make sure that I have these oriented correctly. So, down the other one, I'm going that way. Okay. So we want these facing forward. We'll power them back down. Right, that went in very easily. As did that one. Okay, good. So we've got clearance now. So what I'm going to do is these servos, as you can see, they're sitting side by side here. Um, and I'm just going to shim them in nice and tight uh, with a piece of um, scrap balsa here. CA these in place. So before I CA them in, oh, it does help to have power on to the servos. My wife is laughing at me as usual. And they're happy. Cool. Alright, so at this point, all I have to do is glue this in. Yes, some of the implication here is the servos are in and they are staying in. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, break off a piece of wood front and back, drop in here. I'm going to hit that with some accelerator to make it uh, harden up, and then we'll return to this. Alright, so we've got those guys fastened together. Um, next thing we are going to do, actually, is we are going to take this piece of spider wire. Thread it through the tail boom. Bring it out here. This um, servo, I should note, we're running used servos tonight because the servos I ordered for this plane have not arrived. So in theory, you will not have to deal with, um, with some of this nonsense. tried to widen out that hole that's been gooped up. The previous owner of this particular servo was a uh, pylon, is a pylon racing guy, and so um, his servos all have CA in the control horns. Alright, I'm going to try the other end then. There we go. Alright. Normally, I tie the servo uh, pull springs, I tie them off on the elevator and then set them up here. I'm not doing that this time because I don't have a screw that matches this control horn. You say, what in the world are you doing flying it that way? Well, I'll tell you what I'm doing. I'm gluing the control horn on right now. Okay, 
and that means I need to go in here. this servo, I'm going to glue it in here over to the side and I'll show you in a minute what I'm doing. Um, fasten this guy down. thread this guy back through. So you, a lot of people are probably asking why are we not doing push rods on this? Well, the reason is over a long um, working length like this uh, pull spring gives you a zero uh, slot connection uh, by definition. So you don't have to do anything to remove slot. You do, however, have to do the fact that I mess this up a little bit. That's the problem. When I painted this, I closed up the hole. Now I am using the closest hole in here, which is the one that would give you maximum elevator authority. Uh, two reasons why I am doing that. One is the control horn on that servo is very short, so I'm trying to get everything I can out of that particular servo. The other is I like really, really responsive airplanes. Um, now since I'm doing this backwards, normally you would do this tie off on the servo where you've got lots of room up there to work. Um, I'm threading this, um, this string back and forth through the holes until I can glue it off. So one of the things you want to kind of do uh, with pull spring is you want to do uh, you want to set it up with the servo powered up, plugged in, etc. And the reason for that is you're going to be putting some tension on that line. You want to make sure you get it right. Okay, so you may not have been able to see any of that. What I do have is my string coming out here onto that control horn. You notice I can push the horn down, can't pull it up. So now I push forward. I've got the airplane upside down, obviously, so that's up, that's down. And now I'll address the ailerons here in a second. Now, at this point, I'm going to power down real quick and I'm going to slide all of these bits forward. And this is the part that's a little sketchy because um, what you are about to do is basically make all of the stuff you've done up to this point um, and make it all irreversible. And the reason for that is we're about to glue the wing on. So make sure before you go to this uh, step that we're about to go to that everything is how you want it to be. Because from here on out, you're kind of stuck with it. Alright. Now, 
we're going to go ahead and glue the wing on. Um, what I want to make you aware of, if you look closely, you can see I have these raised rails on either side here, and that's because the wing doesn't sit flat on the fuselage. It's got dihedral. So what I did is I took, uh, before I painted this, I took some scrap wood and I just, um, from the kit, this, the 332nd, and I glued it along either side and then trimmed it off flush. Um, so it's basically two uh, 332nd strips. Um, sorry I didn't show that on camera. It wasn't very interesting. It's just a very uh, straightforward thing. And then I just sanded it in to, to ferret in. So at this point now, I can come in here and I'm going to glue this down by the rails and by the center section. I've already test fitted this several times. And now, all I'm going to do is I'm going to line my wing up on the uh, center line of the fuselage front and back. Rock it in there and it lays down. Make sure my aileron is clear of the sides of the fuselage. Um, when you put those rails in there, you will have to do that because the uh, aileron um, roots are right next to the fuselage. And now what I'll do is hit the sides here with some kicker. In the future, we will try to come up with a way to do a, uh, a removable wing mod uh, for this airplane. Um, as I know, some of you will want that, and some of you will look at it and say, nope, 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 don't want that complexity, I'll just stick with the, the way it already is. So, Alright, um, we're going to pause real quick, and we'll uh, come back and start doing the motor setup. Okay, um, sorry I said motor setup on the last thing. No, we're not doing motor setup. We're doing our ailerons. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop my aileron control horn in here. If you remember, everything is all centered up, all pretty like. And I'm going to mark where I want to bend this guy. And um, if you'll excuse me real quick, I need to go get a pair of wire cutters. I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm back. Okay. I'm actually going to try turning this around. Let's see. Yeah, here we go. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in the other direction. We'll fit it onto the aileron here. Now I'm going to start with the outermost hole because I've got pretty good aileron throw. I've got this on the outermost uh, aileron um, the control horn hole. Um, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop open my hatch down here. I'm going to power this birdie up. And one of the things you'll notice is I don't have the motor hooked up right now. There we go. Yeah, that is lots and lots of aileron throw. Um, I like that amount. You may not, so just be aware of that. Um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here. Hang on, be right back. I need a second pair of pliers. Okay. Alright. Just got my muscle boy close up on this guy. Sorry, those, you won't be able to see what I'm doing right here because I've got this in my lap. Just because this is the easiest way to get to all this. There we go. So, got my aileron where I want it to be. Um, now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and show you this. Remember what I mentioned about pylon racing people? Um, what I like to do is take out the 
slot by gluing that, um, uh, that thing. Alright, and um, we'll be right back. I'm going to go ahead and do the other aileron off camera. So. Okay, so I have both uh, ailerons working now. we get got our um, elevator working correctly. I need to clean out the potentiometer on here. Um, and I went ahead and routed the wires up here to the propeller, so holding this in a safe direction, we do produce power. Now the way to proceed from here is slide your battery up inside. Um, this port on the top generally is not um, something you're going to be using constantly. And so what you can do is you can take one of those screws if I cleaned out this hole, no I didn't. Um, I'll do this on both sides here. The main thing is you don't want this hatch coming open in flight. So what we're going to do is we're going to slide these screws in from either side and that will latch this guy down or hold it down. And we'll stay put. Um, these are the same ones that you would use for your for your rocket pod. Um, and when we get to the, um, when we get ready to fly this uh, this particular model, we'll do you a, a video um, showing all of that. So your bottom port right here friction fits in fairly well. And if you want to, you can run a screw in there to, to latch it in place, or you can run a rubber band across it, uh, tape it, uh, what have you, you should be good. Um, right now, I'm CGing right about here. This is pretty, pretty nose heavy. Um, and several options, you can slide your battery further back or what have you. I've got the battery up here in the nose. Um, but I would recommend putting the, the CG right here at the front of these um, uh, aileron uh, control horn out, um, ports. Um, right there is a very good CG location, so we're about uh, an inch in front of that right now. So this airplane will be nice and nose heavy, but it'll be fast. Um, that's not bad for starting out uh, if you're um, in a, a pylon racing type of an environment. That was weird. Um, a lot of people fly these pretty nose heavy. So, anyway, um, that's the completion of the build. And next, uh, go look for our uh, flying video.